How's it going, mates? This is Miss Charles, and we are back with Lovely Overseer. Now, I have to kind of apologize for the last episode. I basically did some Let's Playing with a nephew, uh, and he messed around with a few settings, particularly on my microphones. Now, I have at least nine videos where the settings are completely wrong, and I sound like a, a, a teenager going through voice break. Hopefully, it's better now. If it's not, let me know. But um, yeah, last episode was a bit loud on the ears with the voice, in my opinion. But now, I've adjusted the microphone, everything should be okay, or maybe it's not, who knows. But anyway, if you're here for the story, previously we got some new recruits in, one of them was trying to like stand up to this officer, and then the headmistress came out and then put her in his place. Put, put her in his place? Well, put him in his place, the guard for being incompetent, and put her in her place by, you know, putting her to sleep or some shit. Alright, anyway. This is why you're all here. The reason your vicious transformation is because you're all manner addicted. And for the sake of our security, you are in need of rehabilitation. Equally, I shall see to it that your talents shall not be wasted. Upon completion of your training and the trials, you'll be admitted to the academy. That's just like university. <laughs> continually being put down and continually have to deal with the shit coming at you. Despite being given this opportunity, the recruits don't bat an eye. Why should they serve the Empire when they've been abandoned, tossed aside, and now forced to be held hostage as potential students of the Academy? Well, regardless of how they feel, I would take the deal 100% of the time, probably because, you know, we chose the job application. If they were to return to their former lives, they'd be returned to a world of poverty and misfortune. If they think sh they should be blessed that this opportunity is even available to them, they'll have everything they could want and more. Do not fret. As a fellow graduate of the Academy, I shall see to it that you are properly equipped and taken care of. Any misconduct, mischief, violence, and rebelling of any kind shall not be tolerated. Does that include the mischief of, um, certain sexual education performances? Just saying. I mean, I kind of do expect one or two scenes of that, which I'm going to have to... <laughs> Finally, you shall apply to the rules of the camp at all times, and as long as you are under my supervision, my authority and rule here trumps all else. Is that clear? Without uttering words, the lines of recruits nod in agreement. They've no choice but to comply to Neoma's demands. Good. Mistress Neoma then turns to me and whispers quietly at my side. Uh, if you will, please resume command on my behalf, as I place these recruits under your trust. Okay, I'll try not to do anything inappropriate. <laughs> you know what you must do? Do not disappoint. I bow out of courtesy. Yes, ma'am. How glad I am to have someone as dependable as you. She smiles quietly towards me, and then fades to the shadows without a trace. Alright, bye, I love you. As she well, I am going to love you later. <laughs> As she leaves, I assume command. Guards, take them to their quarters. I'll deal with them later via training. Right away, sir. We can get little mini games for that. I kind of look forward to that. At my word, the guards escort them as a group to the housing complexes. Well, looks like we're going to have a good batch of talented recruits. It's time to make them the best of the best. Alright, should be good fun. Ah, we're back to the map. So I actually wasn't that far off last episode. Interestingly, uh, the only option I have is to go see Lucy. I remember there being another option, but maybe this is where things slightly take a, a, a change? A shift around? Okay, I can afford to relax. Maybe Lucy will agree to spend her free time with me. Yeah, we can get to know her. Why not? For my first recruit, the guards bring over a short green head and a somewhat busty leopard through the gates. Yeah, the, the, one of the first things I notice is the size of her tits. Uh, uh, to be fair, they're not as big as the wolf girls. As they release her, I dismiss them and confront the girl in question. You have nice green hair, by the way. Is that natural? Surely not. I've never seen a leopard with green hair. Looking down on her, she nervously stands in place with her head lowered. Just based on first impressions, I can't say she's combat ready material. There's no doubt that I have to really get this girl in shape. You're calling her fat? Oh! Oh no, I'm just being a bit of a twat now. Maybe, as the first recruit, I should test her with a question what is your cup size that's a good question let me show you and then just reveals them that that'd be always um a nice thing to do from one male to a female to a female all right i'll show my man boobs first i'll show you yours if you show me mine <laughs> okay i'm being childish look i've had a fair amount of coffee and this is still like this is my first day coming back to Let's Plays. I know it's been like a week for you guys getting two episodes a day but i'm still getting used to it so do you know why you're here the leopard actually looks at me and, and silently squirms over to a question I asked her. 
silently squirm. Sorry, that took me by surprise. What does that sound like? Because a squirm is like, Ugh, but she does it silently. So is it like, like a dying cockroach? Ah, that's totally reasonable. Then she finally responds. Do you mean why I'm here? Or why I'm facing you? Or why you're facing me? I expect that you already know why you're here. After all, it must be obvious by the way that we abducted you from your precious home. Your precious home you'll never see again because you're going to have to go to university whether you like it or not. You're going to be in the doghouse. There'll be a little key in it and I'll lock you in it. I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Don't play stupid. All the candidates we gathered were brought here against their will. By the looks of it, she must be in denial. Oh, so why are you here? I, I don't know, sir. You're here with me because you're due for training and rehabilitation. You drug addict. You Charlie from Lost. I'm on season two at the moment, no spoilers. As much as you want to run away or deny it, you're manner addicted to the core. When it comes down to it, you've got the uncontrollable urge to blindly consume all the manner around you. Yeah, you see those flying little pieces of dust? You want to eat that, that's your diet. KFC or dust, you think dust, but there's something wrong with that. Do you understand? I think so. I move closer to her. Okay, we literally just met her. No funny business. None of this furry business. It's Lucy, sir. Lucy. Okay, Lucy. I'm Asta and I'll be your teacher. No need to call me sir. Just call me Asta. Okay. I'll have to whip her up and sh I thought he actually met with real whips then. That would have been a bit sudden for a girl that did literally nothing. It probably needs to come out of her shell a bit first. Okay, for her to get used to the regime. I gotta admit, personality-wise, I prefer Lucy. Because I, I'm not into the whole, oh, I'm gonna murder you scene with the wolf I've forgotten the name of, if we were even given her name. Do I have a relationship status? No, everything's still the fucking same. Alright, cool. But the fact that she's here means that she must have some capability or talent. So hopefully, I'll be able to pry that out. <laughs> as well as many other things. Where shall I begin, though? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's put her into shock. Let's make her faint on the spot. Now, uh, let's take it easy, nice and slow. A woman likes a gentleman who can be calm and collected, and then declare that, you know, the Enola Gay is coming down to bomb her. It's best that I take it very slow with her. She might have some difficulty keeping up by how she's responding, Okay, so we're just going to begin by setting out some basics. There's no need for you to get nervous, as we'll go nice and easy. If you think you have trouble, you can always let me know. Oh, okay. Yeah, she likes that. She's smiling. Her ears are kind of moving in a strange direction. That sounds good. Well, what shall I do, though? Good question. I'll first have to test out the limits of your manner. She's not going to be a nuke, is she? <laughs> a fucking, like, a, a timer starts on her belly or some shit. It won't take too long to achieve, I believe. I'll guide you through the process. I step to her side and begin instructing her by having her calm down and breathing properly. Because, you know, if you breathe wrong, you might not get any oxygen to your lungs. And heaven forbid that happen. Alright, whatever. She does as I tell her. Okay, good. Good. That's it. Keep going. Next, I want you to remember and feel something that disturbs you. Alright, yeah, I really want you to, you know, feel comfortable. Think of like, I don't know, a spider laying eggs in your eyes. Sorry I had to give that to you guys, but that's basically what this guy's asking of this girl. Or just get you antsy, whichever it is. Focus on it and don't let it go. Okay. Again, without complaint, she does as I ask her. Am I saying that out loud, loud because my name's there? Okay. Sink deeper. Feel the impulse. And once you have it, hone in on it. But then, within minutes from out of nowhere, a small blue mystical aura suddenly surrounds her. It's much smaller than I expected, but this is it. What, so small you can't see it? Because that's how it feels. It's probably even blue, it's probably like grey or some shit, because, you know, this game is very good with colours. Mm, I think I'm getting it. Yes, I'm getting it! Surprisingly, however, she hasn't transformed, unlike the wolf that I encountered at the gate. I wonder why that is. Is she truly manner addicted after all? I mean, it could just be, you know... She casted Illumination from Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and then she got arrested for it. The symptoms seem to be there, the slight cravings, the aura, the, the delirious behaviour. What, like growing green hair? What is this girl doing wrong? 
Well, what's delirious about her? Ah, if you say so, but I suppose she's less so than her peers. Oh, okay, that's enough. I've seen enough. Oh, did I do something wrong? No, no, you did great. Just great. We're done for today. Okay. Although I don't know exactly where to place her, she's quite the special candidate for sure. After all, sometimes it's the silent ones that are the most dangerous. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, to be honest. But then she's not being rough or anything, so... Go figure. Hmm, what's... Okay, who's this? That's Clarice. Go for a walk, Clarice. I could afford to relax. Aren't I doing a job here? Aren't I fulfilling my role as a trainer? Clarice will agree to spend her free time with me. Alright, um... Am I not going to like run out of energy or something anytime soon? Can I do anything else? Can I go for a walk? No, apparently I've got to spend time with Clarice. I want the decision to start again. Okay, as I dismiss my last student, I wait for the next recruit to arrive. The candidates that I've interacted so far have been re relatively intriguing. The candidates that I've interacted so far. Interacted with, but... Look, I make mistakes all the time, so I'm going to forgive the game if they make mistakes. I mean, they've done everything else right. One's quite vicious but skilled in combat, another is dexterous and is reliably adept at releasing his mana. Oh dear. Well, we're not going to go for any of that gay shit. I, I don't think. I mean, it could be. But as far as I know, according to the comments on Steam, it's quite astonishing for a, a furry game to be completely straight. And this one is. I wonder what kind of person I'll get this time. After 10 minutes or so, my upcoming student finally shows up in broad daylight with the other guards. She seems nice. I like her tail. I have the instinct to pick her up and put her on my shoulder because she looks like, you know, three foot. It's a bit ridiculously small, but that's how it feels. She also looks like one of my cats, though, so I'm not sure if I would be willing to date that. I'd feel a bit inappropriate. Sorry, sorry, um, teacher. I was trying to make sure that I was dressed properly for training. Dressed properly? You know, there's no real dress code for training, right? The equipment that I'll provide is the only kind of dress that may be required. Oh, yes, right. Well, looks like she's new to this, so I can't expect to have everything sorted out right from the start. I'll overlook your tidiness for now, but be prepared next time for your session. Unless you have any extenuating circumstances, I expect each and every student to be punctual and here on time. Bitch. She frankly nods her head in agreement. Oh, sure, I won't do it again, I promise. Great, that's good to hear. Um, what's your name? Well, we know because we got it on our little clipboard or whatever. Whatever told us the first time round. Damn it, I still have that nose on my hair from ages ago. The nose from my hair? Hair from my nose. And it's literally just uh, just reminding me of that airport game, which I don't want to go back to. Y you'll get it in a few days. Feeling giddy, she cutely smiles as she introduces herself. Oh, my name is Clarice. Clarice. Easy to remember, don't you think? Yeah, especially when you, you know, give me the syllables one at a time. Sounds like a cute name, actually. Perfect for someone that's as cute and bubbly as her. Okay, I wouldn't normally fancy someone from their name, but I suppose if they're called Matilda, I'd have second thoughts. Dashing red hair with a bikini and skirt, everything about her seems cute. Yeah, I definitely won't forget it. Alright, my name is Asta, and I'll be your personal instructor for the rest of your time here at the camp. I've been personally assigned to you as part of my duty. Oh, is that right? Well, I won't let you down, Asta. I'll make sure of it. Let's hope you're right. In any case, now the introduction's out of the way, I'll give you the laydown for how the training will work. Okay, I'm all ears. So as required by our educational protocols, the purpose of your training is to rehabilitate and develop you as a prospective student, a, pro a prospective, a prospective student at the academy. Question, when they go to the academy, can they do anything... Like, I mean, can they, like, choose certain courses? Is like university where you can do, I don't know, fucking archaeology if you wanted? Or is it just, like, training mana some more? What this means is that you'll come to attain some control over the mana that flows within and around you, and you'll become a student well-versed in magic. Ooh, magic. Yes, magic, like so. I conjure a miniature fireball in my hand as a demonstration. Her eyes glow with such an enchanted look that she appears to be literally spellbound by the flaming ball of fire. Well, it's not a ring of fire, so you know I can't go down, 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 and the flames can't go higher. No way! What are you telling me is that I'll be able to do this? Well, of course. What did you expect when I said magic? Have you ever seen magic before? You idiot! She nods her head. 
Yes, I've seen it all the time back in my hometown. I just never thought I'd be able to learn. Well, you're a mana addict, aren't you? You're a drug lord. You're part of some mafia gang trying to get that sweet fix. Would have thought you'd be used to that kind of shit by now. You'll have that opportunity now. Be sure to take advantage of it. I intend to. Seems like I have quite an eager student in my hands. How about we get started then? Sounds good. I retract the spell and proceed to get preparation started by bringing over some spare equipment. A flimsy piece of armor and a thin metal sword that I've set on the ground for her to pick up. She stares down at the sword in trepidation. Um, do I have to use that for my training? I mean, there's nothing magical about a sword, but I guess so because I'm the Dom here and you're the Femme. Uh, oh god. Wait, you actually want me to decide? I don't know if I should be forceful though or not. She doesn't seem as aggressive as the wolf, but she seems more, like, outgoing than Lucy or whatever her name was. Well, why would I give her the sword? It just seems kind of pointless if she's learning magic. But then she didn't bring her uniform in, and I gotta kind of assert myself. Eh, go on then. It's a requirement whether you like it or not. Slag. Not only will I have you become proficient at using magic, but I will also have you proficient in combat as well. How else would you be able to pass a trial with these capabilities? As she looks at me, her face is riddled with disappointment. Great, I'm a dick. I'm a huge dick. Okay, it's fine. I'm not targeting her. I'm not specifically targeting anyone. Especially not in a predatory kind of way. I just did a Weatherspoon's training application about not targeting people when looking out for that kind of behavior, so I'm not gonna do it in the game. Have I actually disappointed her a bit? I mean, there's no hint saying that, you know, these girls are sad or anything. Nothing's different. Are you sure? Well, if it's required, then... She slowly reaches toward the sword and arm and picks it up. Um, feels light. That's nice, though I don't really know how to use this. That's fine. I'll guide you along the way, but first I want to test you. A test to determine what's causing your addiction. Test? Don't worry, I'll only be te teasing out what might cause you to be addicted. Okay, nothing flirtatious about that sentence, but then I suppose this is meant to be a dating simulator or some shit. Okay, let's begin then, get ready. Since she doesn't seem capable of fighting, I shouldn't fire her head on. Instead, I'll just try and see what makes her tick. I begin by firing out small gentle flurry fireballs around her. You're going to have to move, you know, and do your best to take me down. Oh, okay. You didn't even suggest to, that it was going to be a fight, but okay. She gradually charges up to me with hesitation in her steps and raises the sword as high as she can for a vertical strike. I easily block it with my own sword. You're still going to have to try harder. Mm -mm. She takes a step back and strikes at me. How about that? More force. I got to tease and stretch out her emotions more, just to see how far they'll go. Really? Are you serious? That wasn't enough? Okay. She takes a deep breath and resumes her stance. With another long wind-up, she raises the sword one more for an even more powerful strike. She raises, not raises, but yeah, whatever. But despite her efforts, I'm still able to deflect her attack easily. Looks like you're going to have to try harder. Perhaps you're not ready after all. I sheathe my sword and suddenly, the ground begins to gradually vibrate. Oh, we seem to have pissed her off a bit. The house is going to go down. Am I going to die? Am I going to live? Am I going to, you know, see the end of the world as I know it? I guess we'll see that. In the next episode, if you want to play the game for yourself and see if you can train these lovely women fighters, furry things. <laughs> that was a really bad description. There will be a link to the game in the description down below. Without further ado, we've got Scratch Out this time. See ya!